rejoice and be glad in him. Before we start, I want to thank Sean and Tony for for, for, um, for uh, taking charge while we were away. And I want us to keep Pastor Alistair in prayer, just to let him know we love him, we miss him, we are praying for him for a full recovery, and we love to see him back in the pulpit. Um, Kennedy's available, and I think I'm going to be available anyway. But from the 11th to the 14th of September, the windows are being fitted! <laughs> At long last! <laughs> and at the first Wednesday of every month, there will be a ladies' time. Let's pray before we start. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, that you are ever faithful, God. We do pray for our pastor. We pray for Pastor Alistair, God, this morning. Be with him. Lord God, encourage him, Lord God. Just thank you for his life, his ministry, and his investment through you to us. We pray for Myrtle, we pray for Ruby, and anybody else who's not here this morning, Lord God, that you bless them, touch them, God, bring them out, Lord God, just thank you, God, that you are, you are our faithful Savior, and we can come boldly to you, every time. I, th I thought we'd do Pastor Shallow's song this morning. So I got something the world can't give and the world can't take it away. So. I got something the world can't give and the world can't take it away.
this, Lord, that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. Thank you for the Lordship of our lives, Lord God. Thank you, God. You care for us so much. Every day with you, Lord, is sweeter than the day before. Every day with you, Lord, is sweeter than the day tell you your checkout time is nine o'clock in the morning and you go, really? <laughs> you know, I'm the only checkout time is ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, no, nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, so we all packed the night before. Um, the funny thing was um, Luna the dog decided that we were packing the night before. So we <coughs> got in the car and went, I'm staying in the car. Yeah. You've already packed, that means we're going. So we went. Coax it back out. But we had a great time with family. And uh, it was great to invest in them in their lives. But what a great thing to be back with the family of God. Mm -hmm. We have such a, such a privilege to be with such saints. Yeah, you're saints. That's who God calls you. 
Turn with me to Romans chapter 8, please. And um, we can talk about a couple of things this morning. Reading from verse 31. You know, I love when God asks questions in the Bible, don't you? And it makes you think. So the first question is, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? God be for us, who can be against us? Let me read the rest because then I'll come back to actually preaching. I've lost my place already, in my friend. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, bless these thoughts. Use them to build up your saints. Encourage us in who we are in Christ. And if I wanted a title from this message, I'd say, God is for us. What we should, should we say to these things? What things? You know, what we say to the things we deal with in life every day? God is for us. Who can be against us? That's a good question. What can be against us? Let me give you three. The world. The flesh. And I've got in brackets here, old sin nature. <laughs> We've all got one, you know. <laughs> the devil, the accuser of the saints, will always remind us of our sin. But God will always remind us of Calvary. He'll always remind us that on that cross, he said, it is finished. We are complete in Christ. It's God who justifies. In Romans chapter 5, verse 10, Reconciled to God through the death of his son. What shall having be rec reconciled, we shall be saved. Just think about it. While we were yet in sin, God reconciled us. In Romans 8 1, it says, There is therefore no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus. Philippians, it says, being confident of this very thing. What very thing? God is for us. Being confident of this very thing. He who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God's still working on us. Isn't that good to know? God's still working. We, we, we haven't got there yet. But we're getting there. You know, the whole principle 
that you are saved, you are being saved, and you will be saved. It's a continual work. The finished work, you know, in John 19.30, when Jesus cried out, it is finished, tell us thy. It's a completed work. It's a done deal. It's like if you had a check, if somebody gave you a check for a million pounds, he said, there you go, Kathy. There's a check for a million pounds. Kathy, sing. Just hold the mic. Only if she went to the bank or went to her bank app on her phone and put in the bank <coughs> code would that million pounds become hers. Did you know when Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood for There's nothing more we can do about our salvation is paid in full. Sure, we will work out our salvation in fear and trembling because there are works that God has got planned for us. But we can rest in who he is as we do those works because it's not a matter of works. It's a matter of, of the grace to do what God has called us to do. And I've wrote it down here. Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that that he is at the right hand of God who indeed is interceding for us. And then, the, the, you know, the things that, that bother us, do things bother in your life? <laughs> your tribulation, you ever had tribulation in your life? Have you had things that you've come against you, don't know where they've come from? No, because God's already dealt with that. How about distress? You ever had distress? You know, when, I'm going to be careful here, I'm going to get myself into trouble. <laughs> I'm going to get myself into trouble and she'll probably pour a glass of water over me. When your wife takes a different turn to what the sat nav is saying, <laughs> <laughs> and it gets a bit stressful, does that take away from our salvation? Does that take, no, because God's already dealt with the distress. How about persecution? How about saying, you know, and we had it. We had it this week. You know, we were talking, and we mentioned the Jesus Revolution film, and they went, "Oh no, no, that's a bit over the top." But we're quite happy to talk about any other faith, but not Jesus. Interesting. But that doesn't affect. How about there's not enough food in the cupboard? Famine. You know, I remember when me and Anne were in France, and we couldn't find work. And we lived in potatoes and peanuts for a week. But God kept us. How about nakedness? Oh, I don't know. I, especially for you ladies. Sorry, ladies, I'm taking it here. I went to the cupboard. I don't know what to wear. Did that bother us in Christ? No. Peril. You ever been in a perilous situation? Or sword. You know, somebody's chasing after you. None of the above can separate us from the love of God. No, in all things we are more than conquerors. No, we're not conquerors. The Greek word is hooper Nike. Mm. Now, Nike is a great you know, brand of trainer. <laughs> and the word Nike means conqueror. But we are more than conquerors. Why? Because Jesus paid it all. And we have the Holy Spirit in us that could, that first of all will convict us when we're doing something wrong. I've been convicted by the Holy Spirit. I'm raising my hand. I don't know about you, but I'm raising my hand. Yeah. But we are more than conquerors. And then it goes on to the other, you know, uh, things. Through him that loved us, I am persuaded that neither death. You know, if we die, where do we go? Glory. What about life? Life's details can sometimes take over. But if we are trusting in God for our life, we can commit our life and our plans to him. And say, okay, God, you know the details of life. You know how we're going to get on with family up in Cornwall. <coughs> you know how we're going to get on with the team in Scotland. We know how you get on with people in the church in Ellesmere Port. We all have to deal with life situations. 
whom we have a faithful Saviour who will guide us. How about angels? Oh. You know, angels are, here, are there to minister to us, the saints. But then you have the challenging things, the principalities and powers. Sometimes principalities and powers try to take over from what God has for us. We say, no, we are more than conquerors. We're reminding you that we are, we are in Christ. And we have the Holy Spirit in us. And we can talk to our Heavenly Father. And he is, they are all more important than the principalities and powers. Things present. You know, you know we, we live in Dr. Stevens used to say, yesterday is gone forever. Tomorrow is not yet, yet come. We live in the eternal is. We live in the moment. A moment with Jesus. We sung about it, right? Every day with Jesus, as we did the day before. Yeah, I love getting up in the morning and just singing to God. Or finding a psalm. Or finding something to praise God about. Instead of waking up and going, oh no. It's Monday morning. I have to go to work. All the details of life. No, every day. Lord, this is a new day. I will rejoice. I will be glad in it. This is the day that you have made. So I'm going to live in who you are in me. Not in the details. The details will take care of themselves. Sometimes they'll be hard. Sometimes they'll be easy. But the details will take care of themselves. Things to come. Oh, but what if this happens to me? But what if that happens to me? God will take care of it. Let God worry about the future. He knows the beginning from the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He knows, you know, his plans towards us. I wasn't going to use this verse, but I'm going to use it anyway. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know my thoughts towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you, one translation says an expected end. Another translation says a hope and a purpose. We have a purpose because Jesus' blood was shed for us. There's a song, is, I'm going to stay right under the blood. Why? Because the blood deals with the sin issue. What about height? Who's afraid of heights? Anybody here afraid of heights? Yeah. <clears throat> You know, you know, you, you know, you look at, whoa, it's off a, whoa, like, you, you, that, but it's off a, whoa. Did you know God is there in the heights? What about the depth? God says, if you make your bed in hell, I will be there. If you set yourself on a pinnacle in the heights, I am there. God is there for us. He knows our every need. Any other creature or any other, it says it's slightly different in the New King James. So I'm about to turn back to. I now lost where I am. It says any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. We can separate ourselves from the love of God. God forbid. We can step away. But you know what? God's so loving, he'll pursue us. He'll pursue us every time. He'll put us in a position where he'll back us into a corner and say, I am still here. I still love you. I still have a plan. I still care. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me with your finances. Trust me with your health, your details. But God, there's so many things I can worry about. And God says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. One translation says, casting all your anxiety upon me because I care for you. Do you ever get anxious? Sure. But you know what? God dealt with our anxiousness. Sorry, 
what should be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord? What should separate us? We've read the list. You know? Can Amy separate me from the love of God? No. Can Nigel separate me from the love of God? No. Can um, Theo separate me from the love of God? By the way, wondering who Theo is. Theo is Damien and Jenny's little boy. He is... Six foot. <laughs> yeah, and he's just under two. And he has got a great vocabulary. He really is amazing. But the two things he learned was... Hello, Anne. Hello, Jim. And then when I started playing with him... By the way, they send their love to everybody. It's all I got was... Come on, Jim. Come on, Jim. Come and you know, not come and play. Just come on, Jim. If I stop playing. But you know, God says that to us, doesn't He? Mm -hmm. Come on, Jim. Come, draw near. You know. But until I burden to heaven, the Lord, come unto me. Take my yoke upon you, because my burden. Is God for us this morning? Absolutely. The one thing I've learned over the last couple of weeks, being up in Scotland and being with family, is God is so for me. Probably more than I have been for a long time. Is God for Pastor Alistair this morning? Yes, and we love him, and we miss him, and we're praying for him. And we're looking forward to when he's back in this pulpit <coughs> preaching the word of God. I'm summing up. I know this is a very short message, but hopefully it's imparted life to you. I'm summing up. God is for us. That's the question, is it? Is God for you this morning? Thank you. Somebody got it out of here. Is he against us this morning? No. no. Is there anything that can separate us from the, the love of God? No. no. Despite ourselves. Yeah. 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 yeah, despite ourselves. God justifies us. But a good way to look at justification, I'm going to tell the story. I wasn't going to tell it, but I'm going to tell it because I love it. Is Alistair Begg tells the story of the thief at the cross, gets to heaven. And the angel comes out to me and says, Well, how did you get here? And he goes, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? I, I don't know. So this angel sort of scratches his head. So wait a minute, I'm gonna get you know, you know, a seraphim or a you know, basically a higher angel than me. And he says, okay. He said, um, excuse me, sir, but can I ask you a few questions? The guy goes, yeah. Can you tell me the doctrine of justification? I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. What about sanctification? No, I haven't got a clue. What about scripture alone? Don't know what you're talking about. Well, how did you get here? The man in the middle cross told me I could come. Truly this day you will be with me in paradise. And God says exactly the same about us. Because it's based on his grace. It's not based on his works. But there will be works that God has us to do. But it's based on who he is, what he's done, and what he will do until the day either he takes us home or we go to glory. So let's just pray. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Father, just thank you for this church. Hope this has encouraged people. Hope that God give us the confidence that we have in Christ. Give us, remind us of the hope that we have. 
who does the people that need this message from? Lord, and if there's anybody watching online who's never known Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, God loves you this morning. Jesus died for your sins. And he asks you to come. Simply say a prayer like this. Lord Jesus, I know you died for my sins. Come into my life and save me. I accept you as my Savior. If you said a prayer like that, let, let somebody know. Let somebody you know who's a Christian and find a Bible-believing church. Or come and visit us here in Bagford at Greater Grace Evangelical Church. I was thinking about that because I knew Phil was sort of ready and I, I knew you'd sort of said you were going to do yeah, it sort yeah, of thing. Charlie, and I was like, yeah, no, no, it's perfect, man. No, it's fine. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Would you have verses in the So much fun. It was amazing. Great message.
that's that's what, I was actually that's 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 how long it is. It's just it's the content. Yeah, that's it. You know, five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, five minutes, whatever. I've got to work on that on Wednesday. Let's destroy the phone.